Finally, the blood clot can be cleared away. The pressure is instantly relieved and blood flows back to his suffocating brain cells. The rupture is heat sealed. Lovely, can I ask you guys to close up for me? Thank you. Thank you. The immediate threat to David's life is over. Laura, how are you feeling? Yeah, all right. Good. Well, your x-rays are fine. But we'd like to keep you in for observation. Please you tell me what's going on with David. Is he OK? He's in intensive care. Can I go see him? I'd really like you to stay here. Look, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to be with David. OK. But if there's any change at all, any pain at all, You've got to come straight back, okay? Yeah, okay. I'll let you get dressed. Laura feels okay, but she has to take it easy. Sudden movements could undo her body's delicate repairs. sedated him. The doctor said the operation went really well. He's going to be fine. I'm so sorry. David's condition remains critical. If he wakes up now, his life will once again be in danger. Just as in Laura's spleen, healing fluids are seeping out of the blood vessels in his brain, making it swell so much that any sudden movement might be fatal. David is kept on a sedative drip to make sure he stays unconscious until the doctors are certain that the danger is over. You should go home. I don't want to leave David. You've had a shock. Laura is about to put her life in danger. A sudden movement breaks the clot sealing her blood vessel. 
Once more, blood pours into the membrane around her spleen. If this keeps happening, blood will continue to build up until the membrane is stretched to the breaking point. David's chances of recovery depend on how badly injured his brain is. The news from the CAT scan is good. The swelling has gone down and there is no large scale tissue damage. So David can be safely taken off the sedative. But the CAT scan can't show the microscopic injuries caused by the impact. Some of David's brain cells are dead. They'll never recover. The full extent of these injuries won't emerge until David regains consciousness. There you are. Thanks. It's only instant, I'm afraid. That's okay. But now the sedative is wearing off. I think they had to shave his head. He's gonna hate that. Yes. <laughs> David? <laughs> David? <laughs> David's brain stem sends out signals to rouse his unconscious brain. <laughs> David? He's coming round. I'll get the doctor. David, can you hear me? It's Laura. But there's a problem. Many of the connections leading from the brain stem were bent and twisted in the crash. The signals get jammed. Inside the connections, the delicate cell structure has been shattered. Because these signals can't get through, most of David's brain remains switched off. David? Sweetheart. David, can you hear me? David? I'm afraid I'll need to ask you to leave the room while I examine him. David, can you open your eyes? Can you open your eyes, David? The doctor tests David's responses to simple stimuli, commands, light, and pain. To quickly assess which parts of his brain are working and which are not. Next. is in a coma. Oh, no. He was trying to talk. Yes, it may seem like that, but he is actually unconscious. And there is evidence that his brain is damaged. David's brain damaged? How badly? How bad is it? At this stage, we just don't know. It may be reversible, and he is getting better all the time. We'll just have to wait and see. But he's in the best possible hands. Now, I'll be back to see how he's getting on. Coma is rarely a state of total vegetation. Some areas of David's brain are awake, which is why he can move and make noises. But that's about all. There's nothing else the doctors can do. David's brain has to heal itself.
Laura's wound keeps reopening. The membrane around her spleen is filling up with blood. She feels nothing but a dull ache in her side. Excuse me. Hello. Hi. Can I do that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, sweetheart. Uh, uh, How are you doing today? Uh, uh, I'll let you in on a little I'm secret. Not, I'm not. I've uh, always wanted uh, to do this. Deep within David's brain, the process of straightening the twisted connections has begun. Inside every damaged fiber, the shattered structures are rebuilding themselves. But this process takes time. Your friend Mark called. Talking to coma victims can help speed their recovery. He says he'll be in to see you as soon as he gets back into town. A familiar voice triggers David's brainstem into action. Firing signals in an attempt to rouse the inactive parts of his brain. Even though they don't get through, it's possible that the signals accelerate the healing process. It's eight days since the accident. Finally, David's brainstem is about to make contact with the rest of his brain. The nerve fibers carrying the signals have successfully repaired themselves. Circuits are ignited deep in his unconscious brain. For the first time in over a week, David is waking up. David. 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 It's me, Mom. You're in hospital. You've been in a car accident, and, and they had to give you an operation. But, but you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right now. Laura's all right. She'll be in later. So worried about you. Now, can you lift that hand off mine? No, just that hand. Leave the it's only just now that David's hand. conscious that no, the full extent of the damage to his brain is revealed. Now, push against my hand. He's having trouble moving his right arm. Little. 